welcome to Tech Up. I'm your host, Sarah Ingram, and once again, we're bringing you tech news and reviews of mobile apps, gadgets, peripherals, and more. Here's what we have for you this week. Russian lunar space stations Putin on the Ritz in space, deep sea microbes that are giving researchers a glimpse into our evolution, jetpacks, this is not a drill, I repeat, this is not a drill, and the most super adorable two-legged robots. The asteroid mining industry is set to take its first steps into space this summer. Asteroid mining company Planetary Resources announced that it will deploy its first satellite and run a demonstration mission this summer. Planetary Resources' ARCID-3R probe currently sits aboard the International Space Station and is scheduled to be deployed sometime in July. Once it's flying solo, the drone will perform a demonstration mission, testing out systems that will enable future probes to study and eventually mine asteroids in deep space. The aim is to help humanity extend its presence into the solar system by tapping into asteroids' water and precious metal resources, while making a nice profit on the way, of course. Researchers believe they found the missing link to the evolution of complex cells in deep sea microbes. The researchers said the new findings will help them better understand how complex cell types, including plants, fungi, animal, and humans, evolved from simple microbes billions of years ago. The researchers studied Loki's genome and found that the microorganism represented an intermediate form between the simple cells of microbes and the complex cells of eukaryotes. The team said that, in a way, they're just getting started. There's still a lot out there to discover and to revise our biology textbooks more often in the near future. I just hope that these microorganisms don't take after their namesake, or I'll be giving the Avengers a call. The United States has decided to vote no in modifying human embryo DNA. The statement comes from Dr. Francis Collins at the U.S. National Institute of Health in response to the recent announcement by the Chinese of their research involving modifying the DNA of human embryos. He argued that there were serious and unquantifiable safety issues, big ethical questions, and no compelling medical research to do it. He said the NIH would not fund such research in the U.S., which is pretty huge. The embryos used in Chinese studies were non-viable, so could never have led to a child, and they had a success rate in 7 out of 86 attempts. However, there were a number of other off-target mutations introduced to the genetic code. I'm definitely interested to see where this type of research could go. It just won't be coming out of the United States, apparently. Russia and China are in talks to become the main partners of a new lunar scientific space station. It's been reported that both parties share deep mutual understanding and mutual interests in this area. Exploration of the Moon and Mars is a priority for the Russian space program. In mid-April, President Vladimir Putin said that Russia plans to launch its national orbital station by 2023. The station is to serve as a base for Russia's lunar program, and spacecraft will be delivered first to the station before proceeding to the moon. On April 22nd, Russia's space agency head Igor Komarov said that Russia is expected to carry out a manned mission orbiting the moon in 2025 and conduct a manned landing on the surface of the moon in 2029. Looks like China's gonna be Putin Russia on the map when it comes to lunar space stations. A new method of breast exam detects 40% more cancer than the traditional mammogram. Tomosynthesis, the new method, is coming from a major screening study from Lund University, Sweden. This is the first large-scale study to compare the screening method with regular mammograms. Breast tomosynthesis is a three-dimensional x-ray technique that makes it easier to detect tumors in breast tissue. The technique works on the same principle as tomography, where x-rays are taken from different angles of the breast. This is compared with a traditional mammography, where all the breast tissue is reproduced in a single image, which can hinder the early detection of tumors. The new technique also reduces discomfort and pain because the breast does not have to be compressed as firmly as in the current examination technique. This could lead to higher levels of participation in future screening programs. Jetpacks are finally here, and no, that is not your imagination just hearing the best thing ever. Jetman Rossi has taken to the skies again, this time with a partner. Rossi has made a name for himself by flying with nothing but a jetpack attached to his body. 
In December, the Swiss daredevil even flew in formation with an airplane over Dubai. Video was released showing Rossi flying once more over the gleaming emirate, but this time he was accompanied by skydiver and base jumper Vince Reffitt, who also had a jetpack. Or more accurately, a jet-propelled wing strapped to him. This looks and sounds super dangerous, and also super fun. Sign me up, please! Atreus, a bipedal robot coming out of Oregon State University, looks like half a horse, walks like a dainty dog, and is super cute! You may remember Atreus from that time researchers pummeled it with dodgeballs. You know, for science? Well, here they're taking it out for a walk in the park because it's a good boy. He's guided along by a brace that looks like a swing set, but is more likely there to catch him if he falls. The DARPA-funded bot is meant to test ways to make bipedal robots more energy efficient, with the eventual goal of an all-terrain bipedal robot that can easily sprint when needed without falling down. In the meantime, we get a series of goofy bot videos, so it's a win-win. I would love to see a video of these guys playing soccer against each other. They would fall over and be super cute, and I would be the happiest person ever. A virtual reality theme park is bringing back arcade gaming in a big way. Like a phoenix rises from the ashes, so too will the arcade. A Utah-based company will be opening The Void, a completely virtual reality theme park. The technology at The Void will allow VR gamers to experience a completely immersive world of their choosing, battling any number of horrific creatures designed to induce pants-wetting reactions from anyone willing to fork over the big bucks that'll inevitably be required to enter this virtual reality paradise. At The Void, you will walk into new dimensions and experience worlds without limits. From fighting intergalactic wars on alien planets to casting spells in the darkest of dungeons, The Void presents the future of entertainment. If there were one of these in town, I would never leave, because I am seriously ready to pwn some noobs. Thanks again to our friends at Futurism for supplying us with this episode's biggest news bits. Make sure you check out Futurism online so you can keep up with all science and technology news as it happens. That wraps up this episode of Tech Up. Make sure you share your comments and suggestions on Facebook and Twitter, tell us what you think, and let us know what you want to see. I'm Sarah Ingram, and we'll see you next time. Come see me in the moonlight Something wrong with my eyesight This darkness seems so bright to me Along with every word I sing 